subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Good morning students. Today topic is uh, the essence of anther and the structure of the following grains. In the last class, macrosporogenesis had complete. Today we are discussing about uh, the decessence of anther. Already you know the structure of the anther. The structure of the anther consists of the two parts. One is the anther wall, another one is the sporogenous tissue. The anther wall is consist of the four layers. What is the name of four layers of anther? The outermost layer is known as the epidermis, second one endothelium, third one middle layer and fourth one the petal. So in these three anther walls, so during the maturation of the anther, during maturation of the anther, some changes are takes place in the walls of the anther. What are the changes are takes place in during the decessence of the anther? So first one, in beginning of anther, the middle layers is completely disappear. Why the middle layer is completely disappear? That due to absorption of food by the tapetum. Even the innermost layer of the tapetum is also completely degenerated because that is completely consumed by the, the dolloping pollen grains. In a mature anther is finally only consist of the two layers only that is outermost layer is known as the epidermis, second one is the endothelium. Okay, at the immature anther is consist of four anther walls but in mature anther is only consist of two anther walls that is the epidermis and endothelium. See here the structure of the dexins of the anther. See this is a outermost layer. So this one epidermis endothelium. This is a endothelium. The two anther lobes are connected by the connective tissue. This is a, the connective or vascular tissue. See here in these uh, structures, the dexins of anther consists of only two anther walls. What is the name of the two anther walls? That is a epidermis and endothelium. Next one, this is a one anther lobe. This is a another anther lobe. The immature anther already you know each anther lobe is consist of the two pollen sacs. But here see the sterile tissue between the sterile tissue between the two pollen sacs is completely disintegrated in each anther lobe. So the two pollen sacs. So fuse together and form the single cavity. This is known as the pollen cavity. In this 
polyp cavity already you know each macrosporangium is consist of the the several thousands of the polyp threads these are the polyp threads number of polyp threads are produced inside of the each macrosporangium these are all polyp threads polyp threads each macrosporangium contain several thousands of the polyp threads see here in this structures this is only one polyp sac this is also say one polyp sac this point is very very important so in immature anther is consist of the the total four polyp sacs but the mature anther is consist of only two polyp sacs why the sterile tissue between the two pollen sacs in each anther lobe is completely de degenerated that's why right here the two pollen sacs fuse together and form the a single cavity a single pollen cavity so that's why right. in the mature stage each anther consists of only two pollen cavities only that's why right. this is known as the the mature anther contain two pollen sacs only this point is a very very important next one this pollen threads when well developed inside of the each anther lobe is complete the structure of the anther the mature anther becomes the dehydrated when this is a completely dehydrated the first initially the dissection of anther is takes place at the region of the stomium this is known as the stomium stomium means mouth like structures what is the stomium in endothelium where the fibrous thickenings are completely absent that region is known as the stomium generally it is located between uh, two pollen sacs the first uh, the dissection of anther is uh, takes place in the region of the stomium in the region of the stomium and then this pollen threads are released from the each pollen sacs and then dispersed into the environment okay so this this side also same as this next one when this pollen grains is released from the pollen sacs so particularly here the stomium is a longitudinal dissection is a takes place the line of dissection is a longitudinal the longitudinal dissection is a the most common in annual sperms okay so this is a the dissection of anther okay next one the structure of the pollen threads see here the pollen threads are dispersed in environment so what is the structure of the pollen threads what is pollen threads generally here the pollen threads is a the first cell of the male gametophyte this point is very important the initial here the initial spore of the male gametophyte is known as the pollen threads or microspore the microspore is the first cell of the male gametophyte next one the structure of the pollen threads if you touch the open anther of any flower if you touch the open anther of any flower the number of yellowish powdery pollen grains are touched to your finger that pollen grains are sprinkled on a the uh, drop of the water on the glass slide that is observed under the microscope the clear visible the structure of the pollen grains different size different color different uh, 
designs are completely visible under the microscope. So generally here, the structure of the pollen grain is a spherical in structure. The structure of the pollen grain is generally spherical in structure. The measuring about uh, 25 to 50 micrometer in diameter. Next one, the structure of the pollen grains is enclosed by the two pollen layers. This is uh, the outermost pollen layer. The outermost layer is known as the exine. The inner layer is known as the intine. The both is known as the sporoderm. The pollen grain wall is known as the sporoderm. This sporoderm is divided into two layers. One is outermost layer is known as exine, the innermost layer is known as the intine. Now, exine. Exine is the outermost layer, it is very hard layer and it is made up of the sporopollenin. This is very important. The exine is made up of the sporopollenin. What is a sporopollenin? This sporopollenin is a similar or similar to the cutin. This is cell wall layer, cutin and sobering. This sporopollenin is formed from the oxidation of the polymerization of the carotenoids. It is developed from the carotenoids. You know the carotenoids is uh, the pigments, photosynthetic pigments. So here the sporopollenin is formed from the oxidation of the polymerization of the carotenoids. It is related to the sporopollenin is related to the cutin and the sobering. Next one, this sporopollenin is a highly resistant to the organic matter. So it is a very resistant to the organic matter. So, it can withstand high temperature, strong acids and alkaline sporopollenin. This sporopollenin, when the sporopollenin is present in so exide, these pollen grains, when preservative as fossils due to the presence of the sporopollenin, that is known as the macrophosis. The pollen grains, well preservative as fossils due to the presence of sporopollenin. That fossil is also known as the macrophosis. Next, one more important point here: the exine. The complete the exine is made up of the sporopollenin where the sporopollenin is completely absent. That region is known as the germ pore. This is the germ pore. Where the sporopollenin is completely absent in exine layer, that region is is known as the germ pore. This germ pore, what is the main function of this germ pore? The intent is comes out from the germ pore and form the comes out from the germ pore through the germination to form pollen tube. So generally one pollen tube is comes out from the germ pore that is known as the Mono siphonous 
some cases the many germ tubes are comes out from the structure of the pollen grains that is known as the polycyclus the best example for the monocytous hibiscus the best example for the polycytous cucurbita so when the germ pore is uh, so particularly here this inside layer this inside layer is comes out through the germ pore during the pollen germination to form the pollen tube that is the main function of the here germ pore the pollen tube is developed from the the region of the germ pore only one pollen tube is comes out from the germ pore that is a monocytous many pollen tubes are comes from the germ pore that is known as the polycytous it is a, the monocytous is a common type next one this exit and further is a differentiated into the two layers of the one is a exit and exit Exine is also known as the sex side. And exine is also known as the next side. And further, the sex side is divided into the three layers. Total three layers are there. One is the fourth layer. backlet layer tectum this is a three layers is further differentiated sex side the sex side is the one of the layer of the sex so food layer it is continuous layer in sex side it is in the most layer the middle layer is a backlet it is a discontinuous layer and the last uh, outermost layer of the exit is a tectum tectum so this uh, tectum is uh, exhibited the different designs of the pollen grains here see the spiny structures are there this uh, spiny structures is uh, exhibited by the tectum tectum is a uh, outer layer of the exit middle discontinuous these two layers are discontinuous layers Foot layer is the continuous layer. After foot layer, that is known as the next side. Below the next side, in time, the inter is the the inner wall of the pollen grain. So this in time is made up of the cellulose and the pectin. cellulose and pectin the inter is made up of cellulose and pectin and one more important point in in time is also contain enzymatic protein these are two points are important for the in time the inter is inner wall of the pollen grain it is made up of the cellulose and the pectin it is also contain enzymatic protein and one more point of there here the the presence of based on the presence of the germ pore one germ pore is there that is known as the mono colpet two is there bi colpet three is there tri colpet on the basis of the number of germ pores present in pollen grains the pollen grains is mainly three types of the mono means single bi means two tri means three mono colpet means only one germ pore are present in the structure of the pollen grain 
the two germ codes are present in the structure of the pollen grain that is called bipolpate and the three present that is called tripolpate. Generally here the monopolpate is present in monoparts. Next, tripolpate is generally is present in dicots. It is very important in all dicot plants generally here three germ cores are present in each structure of the pollen grain. But in monocots, only single germ cores are present in the structure of the pollen grain. It is uh, the structure of the sporoderm. What is meant by here sporoderm? The sporoderm is uh, the wall of the pollen grain. Wall of the pollen grain. This sporoderm is further is a differentiated to pollen grain walls. That is a accent and that is a impact. This is a, the information about the the wall of the the structure of pollen grain. Next one, the inside of the intact. See, this is a plasma membrane. The cytoplasm is enclosed by the plasma membrane. Plasma membrane. This is a cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is a enclosed by the plasma membrane. Next one. This cytoplasm is initially one nucleus is there. This one nucleus is a undergo the mitotic cell division, unequal mitotic cell division to form the two unequal cells. What are the two unequal cells? This is one is the biggest cell, another one is the small cell. The biggest cell is known as the This bigger cell is known as the tube cell or vegetative cell. Tube cell or vegetative cell. This tube cell, the cytoplasm is consist of reserve food material and then it is also contained the irregular shape of the nucleus. This is the nucleus of vegetative cell. The nucleus of vegetative cell, it is a irregular shape. Next, the small cell is known as the generative cell. This is a generative cell. This generative cell is also contained dense cytoplasm and the spindle shape of the nucleus. This is the nucleus of generative cell. This, uh, the generative cell is a very small cell. It is uh, floating on the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell because it is very small cell. That's why this uh, generative cell is floating on the cytoplasm of the tube cell or vegetative cell. Totally here, the structure of the pollen grain, how many cells are there? Two cells. One is the vegetative cell, another one is the generative cell. The majority of the flowering plants, the pollen grains are shut down from the anther in these two cell states. And further, see here, in generative cell is further undergo the one more mitotic cell division to form the two main gametes. Two main gametes, when the two main gametes is developed from the, the generative cell, two main gametes plus one vegetative cell that is known as the total three cell stages. So it is very important. The majority of the flowering plants that is a 60 percent, the pollen grains are shut down from the two cell stages. What is a two cell stage? One is a vegetative cell, another one is the 
generative cell. Nearly 60% of flowering plants, the pollen grain is shut down from the anther in two cell space. The two cell space, one is vegetative cell, another one is the generative cell. Next one, remain 40%. That is a three cell space. What is a three cell space? One is a vegetative cell plus two male gametes. Two male gametes. One is vegetative cell, another one is the two male gametes. One plus two totally three cell stages. Okay, so this is very important the cell stage of the, the structure of the pollen grains. Now, I am asking one simple question. How many meiotic cell divisions, how many mitotic cell divisions are developed from the, the two cell stages of the pollen grain from pollen mother cell? See here, you take, this is one pollen mother cell. One pollen mother cell is a undergo one meiotic cell division. The pollen mother cell undergo meiotic cell division to form the total four macrospore that is a pollen grain. Now First mitotic cell division. With the for first mitotic cell division, that is unequal mitotic cell division, how many cells is formed? Two cells, that is vegetative cell, another one is the generative cell, that is one one. Total here, the each pollen grain is under the first mitotic cell division. Here, meiotic cell division. The meiotic cell division is equal to pollen mother cell. That's why here one is to this ratio is very very important. The formation of the two cell stages of the pollen grains from single pollen mother cell, how many meiotic cell divisions and how many mitotic cell divisions are required? That is known as the 1 is to 4. What about here? Three cell stages. In three cell stages, how many meiotic cell divisions and how many mitotic cell divisions are required from the from the single pollen mother cell. See here. What is the three cell space? One is vegetative cell, another one is the two main gametes. The two main gametes are developed from the which one? The generative cell. Same pollen mother cell, same meiotic cell division. As a result of second meiotic, sorry, second mitotic cell division to form three cell space. Total eight, that is the one is to eight ratio. These points are very important for a neat competitive entrance examination. Two cell space, how many? Meiotic cell divisions, how many mitotic cell divisions is uh, required for the developer from the one pollen mother cell that is uh, 1 is to 4. Total 3 cell states. So, how many meiotic cell divisions, how many mitotic cell divisions is required from development from the single pollen mother cell that is uh, 1 is to 8. See here, one more important point is that this X cell. X end is further two layers is there that is a sex end and next end. The sex end is the outermost layer is known as the tectum. What is main function of tectum? It is exhibited the design of the, the structure of the pollen grains. So generally in anemophilous plants, in anemophilous plants, this hex end is generally smooth nature, but in anthemophilous flowering plants. The pollen grains having pollen tip. Pollen tip. 
This pollen tip is a sticky nature and the oily nature. It is responsible for the, the pollen grains are adhering with the, the insect body and when these pollen grains are attached to insect body automatically what happens? This pollen grains is carrying from so one flower to another flower. It is responsible for the, the cross pollination. Next one. Some important points of the structure of the pollen grains. Already studied in lower classes. Palynology means the study of the the study of the pollen grains. Palynology means the study of the pollen grains. Next one. Which one is largest pollen grain? The largest pollen grain is Mirabilis. And which one is the smallest pollen grain? The smallest pollen grain is Myophotis. Which one is the longest pollen grain? Jostira. It is a sea grass. Okay. So, what is it here? Palynology means the study of the pollen grains. So, which pollen grain is the largest pollen grains in the flowering plants? That is Mirabilis. Smallest pollen grain is Myophotis. And the longest pollen grain is Jostera in C class. Okay. So, this is the structure of the pollen grain. Next one, the pollen allergy. In some plants, the pollen grains cause the severe pollen allergy. The severe pollen allergy means especially here some chronic respiratory disorders like asthma and the bronchitis. That is caused by the here the pollen allergy. The best example Parthenium. Parthenium or carrot grass. Carrot grass. This plant pollen grains is called as the pollen allergy. This parthenium, this parthenium, so came into the India with contaminated imported wheat. Wheat varieties. These wheat varieties are imported from the other countries that is contaminated with the parthenium. So that's why here the parthenium is faster that is came into the India. That is the pollen allergy. What are the other examples for the here? The parthenium. This is one of the examples the parthenium is causes, a, causes the pollen allergy. Next one. Synopodium. Synopodium. Sorghum, sorghum, next, amaranthus, amaranthus, resinus, and cyanodon. This is a grass, etc. These are other plants, the pollen grains is also causes the pollen allergy. In NCERT textbook, this only one example is there that is parthenium or carrot grass. 
these are all plants the pollen grains are called the pollen energy next one pollen products pollen products the pollen grains so rich in nutrients what are the nutrients are present in pollen grains one is the carbohydrates that is nearly 24 to 48% of so carbohydrates are present in pollen grains proteins 7 to nearly 27% fats 0 0.4 to 14.5 million these are approximate the composition of the these nutrients carbohydrates proteins and fats that's why the pollen grains are rich in one nutrients in western countries these pollen products are used in the form of the pollen tablets and syrup to enhance the vital body functions that purpose the use of the these pollen products in western countries in western countries the pollen products is uh, taken in the form of the pollen tablets and syrup is are available in market next one pollen viability next concept pollen viability so what is the pollen viability it is a uh, very important the pollen viability means the period for which the pollen grain retain the ability to germination the period for the pollen grains retain the ability to germination that is known as the pollen viability this pollen viability is a differ from one plant species to another plant species and then this pollen viability is also depending on environmental factors like uh, temperature and humidity for example rice and wheat in these two plants the pollen viability 30 minutes next one Rogesi family, Solanaceae family, and uh, Leguminosae, it is Papis. In these three families, the pollen viability is uh, one month. The pollen viability is uh, one month. This is C. Rice and wheat, 30 minutes. The rosaceae, solanaceae, and the leguminosae, the pollen viability in one month. In some plants, that is, take the five months or one year or many years. That is depending on the plant species. So that's why here the pollen viability means the period per the, the period per which pollen grains the period per which pollen grains retain the ability to germination. Next one, pollen bank. What is pollen bank? The storage of the pollen grains in liquid nitrogen at 196 centigrade. The storage of the pollen grains in nitrogenous liquid at minus 196 centigrade that is known as the, the pollen bank and later these pollen grains are used to the in plant breeding program the purpose here the pollen grains are stored in the liquid nitrogen at the minus 196 centigrade so that storage of the the pollen grains is known as the one pollen bank. This is the concept of the, the
that extends of anther and uh, the structure of the pollen grain and that related uh, the pollen allergy and pollen products and pollen viability. Okay. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.